Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we're here and this is going to be week number 9 I believe of the PBAL and uh, we are up against Choice Specs and his Orlando Magic Carp now. He's one of the teams with the top records and one of the top seeds in this entire batch of coaches. So it will be really, really difficult. I've been seeing just kind of how strong some of his mods are. I believe Haxfors is going to be in the running in the top few for KO leader, but there is one crucial thing that I did notice about his team and it is that he doesn't have much in the way of dark and ghost resists so I'm gonna be leaning on Chandelure quite a bit here but also his only dark resist was uh the top of Bulu which was very very interesting to me because I do think the Bulu is something that I can play around and obviously the combination of Chandelure and Urshifu can wear down over time but this is kind of going to be why I'm bringing a bandit Urshifu now the thing is I think we are going to play each other again in the future because of that in my heart of hearts I do genuinely believe that scarfed Urshifu does put in a little bit more work here it's, it's, it does a lot more for me but I kind of want to go in with a bandit strategy this time to, to kind of feel it out test it out and if he has really solid Urshifu checks then I might change it up later when if if we rematch in postseason but regardless everything in team preview is really really interesting right because uh we do see the lack of a type of bulu so no dark resist on the team but not only are there no dark resists but uh he brings the orb beetle which is really really interesting i mean obviously it leads me to think that he wants some kind of a screens maybe webs um so i'm gonna have to play around that a little bit but it is a mon that is weak to Urshifu, right? And pretty much everything on the team is mildly weak to Urshifu. Obviously, the biggest thing that I kind of have to mitigate in my mind is going to be the Zero Aura. I'm going to have to play around that quite a bit, but uh, it doesn't feel insurmountable, really. I think um, even though my biggest defensive checks in the Skarmory and the Slowbro are weak to Electric, I think, again, it's going to be something that I kind of can mitigate. Oh, and I do also have a Savali Ghost to kind of give myself a physical Ghost Presence because obviously Chandelure is great, but just having another Dimension and another Heavy Ghost Hitter is going to be really strong here, again, given that his team has zero Ghost Resist on the roster. And as far as Zero Aura goes, I do have a Max Defensive Rotom, which I think can play around it a little bit. Um, it's going to have to be my, my best answer in, in, in this one, but uh, obviously if this one uh, d doesn't go well, then I have... Uh, some time to kind of reassess whatever the heck I want to do here and we can go from there. So as far as leads go, um, I did kind of lean back on my kind of go-to lead in that Urshifu. I just think it checks so many things. It scares so many things out. It does a lot of kind of what I want to do. I kind of want to put this Urshifu in his head early and kind of force him to play around it, so to speak. But really, I also just think it gives me the most options, except obviously against a lead uh, zero aura because this is just some a situation where I have to kind of switch out um, like I was saying in the team preview I really only have one play here because of how strong just really fast strong electric types are against my team I really don't have the best answers my two real strong defensive backbones uh, are weak to, to electric which is something that I probably should have thought more about uh, when drafting the team but uh, so far, it's been not the worst for me, but regardless, we were able to pick up that Rotom, and it has been dealing, and it has been mitigating that weakness a very decent amount for me. Go straight up for the play rough, which, um, again, makes me think that he's kind of prepared a, a line in his head where, there's, where the Zero Aura is going to be the Urshifu check, and it's going to kind of affect how I play this, but regardless, I think... Um, I think I thought about Volt Switching here, but um, I think I decide ultimately that Substitute is going to be the best play because I guess it mitigates the Arcanine. Ultimately, Volt Switch is probably the best play possible. Um, I'm probably thinking about, I, I, I guess I'm thinking about um, potential double switches in case he does want to bring in the Arcanine. I, I do think the Arcanine is his best play now, um, and I would be very surprised if he allows me to get a, a Will-O-Wisp this early in the match. But, um, and obviously foul play is not going to be the strongest for me if he does bring in the Arcanine anyway, so, um, Volt Switch is probably the best play. I think I get there in the end. No, I just clicked will -Wisp. So, I did go for the Power Punch, which I, I, I am remembering now, but, uh, I guess I didn't mind all that much whether or not he wanted to go into the Arcanine, because I could Volt Switch out on the next turn anyway, assuming... 
my assumption with that Arcanine was that it would be very, very defensive, and even though um, Wicked Below does get through the Intimidate, uh, it was one of the best options he had for kind of mitigating my damage output, just in general, and it's probably one of the most defensive mods he has available to him. Regardless, he lets me get the will of his off, which was pretty fantastic. I think he... I think ultimately... Um, my thinking here was that he would feel the most free to kind of uh, set up or do any type of things. Um, I, I guess honestly, one of my biggest kind of fears was that he would uh, try to set up, try to bulk up, or anything like that, or, or, or even just knock off. I mean, knocking off items on on my team is just really not great. And as much as I really wanted to to make the boulder play and 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 click volt switch, it. If he does, if he does anything else, again, I really don't have the best answers to this zero aura, so I really couldn't risk having anything on my team taking that type of damage this early on in the match. And here I just set up a sub um, because here with it burned, even if it even if it is burned plus two with those power punches, um, I kind of have to start thinking about what the next mon in is going to be. Potentially, um, the Arcanine. This would set me well up against the Arcanine. Um, but it really all depends on how much damage he's doing to me and that blade and him revealing the, the blade stick in that moment does reveal to me that he can break the sub so it was kind of an unfortunate kind of um, sequencing of, uh, of these plays but uh, once he re re revealed the blaze kick obviously there was no use in trying to, to do any subs I was, I was never gonna end up behind a sub for a follow-up Arcanine to want to come in so I'm going to have to deal with that and just take it out with a foul play. But, again, that is the biggest threat to Zeraora down very, very early on in this matchup. And, uh, or sorry, the biggest threat to my Urshifu down very, very early on in this matchup. And I'm feeling really solid about how well this Urshifu can, can have to do. Now, one of the biggest things um, is that, assuming a very defensive Ar Arcanine... Um, I still do need a decent amount of chip damage, and even, I believe, banded. I still need chip damage in order to do what I need to do against it, if I remember those calcs correctly. But regardless, um, or, or I guess I just think about it right now. But regardless, um, I do feel, I do believe I needed, uh, some chips spread around just to ensure some KOs. Um, obviously, Crobat is still going to be a big, big issue for me. I'm going to have to kind of mitigate the the Crobat, and I want to be able to not allow it to come in and kind of just stop my Urshifu in its tracks. So I'm going to have to um, play around it kind of uh, somewhat cr creatively, but I might think about going into the Urshifu now. Yeah, no, I, I, I get off of that train pretty early on. Um... And, and I end up going into the Silvali Ghost because, again, this is all about my, my thinking. I, I, I believe I'm, I'm running Calcs in these moments. And if it's if it's not full, fully max defensive, then I believe I, I I had a chance to KO that I'm banded. And, uh, but if it is really defensive, so I really didn't want to play those kinds of risky games. I felt like my best option would be just to take a hit with, with my Silvali parting shot out and then be able to manage it there but he reveals the snarl which was so so huge because now i'm looking at my team and i'm thinking nothing really wants to be in on a combination of snarl and and flamethrower like that really kind of goes tears through my team and this is a very very important kind of moment to for, for me to know in any future matchups because this is not a set that i'd even considered in my head and it's a set that really really um hurts my team quite a bit and uh i'm going to try to mitigate it now by kind of parting shotting out and now I'm, in retrospect i'm seeing obviously the better play would have been to get some chip damage off with with volt switch and kind of um play somewhat of a longer game from there but uh yeah this was really difficult for me to see in the moment kind of how i manage this snarling arcanine i um i i think i'm thinking about it i because i think i think i'm thinking about um just taking the resisted hit with with, with Urshifu and trying to deal with all, all that damage back to it. But again, it's that same risk of, do I try to hit this Arcanine without any chip damage on it beforehand? And obviously that gets kind of dicey. Um, and it really depends on a lot of how he wanted to build against me. But I am able to bring in the, the Rotom. And because of that parting shot, I am able to take it. And I am able to... 
um, maneuver myself a little bit in this one. I'm trying to bait out a flamethrower because I think <laughs> I think that's going to ultimately be the best case scenario if I can if I can at least make him click in optimal moves to just kind of um, to just kind of uh, maneuver in and out. And again, the name of the game is just chip damage. All I want is just the slightest bit of chip damage to ensure certain KOs with my Urshifu because I really do think that that is going to be what kind of seals it for me in the overall look of this match but um i do get to see now with that volt switch damage and I, and I actually think in the moment if i remember correctly i i didn't even think about this correctly because i think i miscalculated, it assuming that um that that rotom was at you know what whatever a regular um uh special attack stat would be but it was a minus one or minus two because of those snarls and I go into Slowbro, which um, I guess was pretty bold of me, but I'm thinking here that I can kind of, again, just maneuver myself around, kind of mitigate. I, I, I wasn't the most afraid of taking a single Snarl, but obviously I, I can switch into a Snarl and and um, and maneuver myself a, a, accordingly. But he does a lot of damage, much more damage than I would have expected. It is a crit. Um... And he does lower my special attack, which really does snake. But I do, am able to get the future side off. And now that I'm pretty confident that he is going to lock himself into these snarls against my um, against my special attacking mons, I believe this is the moment where I take an opportunity to make a really bold play and go directly out into the Urshifu. In retrospect, I probably should have gone directly out from the uh, from the Rotom into the Urshifu, but I think I think part of me I don't know I think part of me expected him to to want to switch around me, maybe not wanting to take the chip damage, he, um, because I part of me thought that he would instead of snarling on my slow bro, he'd want to avoid taking the skull damage, but he just stayed in, um, which I mean. To be to be truthful, one of the biggest kind of um, weaknesses of mine is when is when I expect people to make um, kind of more timid switches out and they just stay in and it kind of puts me at a loss and especially if I'm out of play, um, it puts it makes me prone to putting myself into bad positions like right now where I have to switch into some I have to switch something into a potential strong flamethrower or some kind of a strong hit here. Uh, I do go into the Rotom as he gets the Will with Bob. I mean, uh, that is, that was also a very instructive moment because now I at least get to see what he, how he thought he was going to be able to deal with my Urshifu, right? Because in his mind, he could always take um, a, a single Urshifu hit, and then, and then um, Will with me, and then. Um, put me in a bad position for the rest of the match but now that i kind of see this line and also i now that they have so much chip damage down onto this uh, Ar arcanine it makes me feel that i'm able to be a lot more bold and even though he just lets me get get the snarl or he just gets the snarl off and picks up ko here it's not going to be the worst thing in the world to me because now i have every bit of chip damage that i feel like i need and now i feel confident enough i believe Please tell me that I just go into Urshifu. Yeah, now I feel confident enough to just go into the Urshifu. I don't feel like I have to fear anything anymore because I got the future sight damage off. I got everything that I needed off. And in and in retrospect, it probably would have been better just to um just click scald and then not have to switch out switch around as much. Maybe. Well, to be fair, that crit threw me off, right? I think if I I think if that snarl didn't crit, then I would have been been able to scald and then teleport to the next turn and then it would have been in roughly the same spot but regardless we're here now i think that crit genuinely did uh throw me off a little bit but he switches out um as i'm able to threaten a ko onto this arcanine and i click wicked blow and i don't think he expected this but because i am banded the incoming crowbat is just a straight up uh oko and that is probably the biggest threat remaining to my Urshifu, right? Because obviously just outspeeds me and very potentially KOs me. I um, I think he didn't expect quite as offensive and Urshifu for this moment, but the, but the, these are the exact moments why I brought this being at Urshifu 4, right? Because 
Um, he doesn't have many Dark Resists, and the Dark Resists that could come in are going to take more damage than he expects, and I'm going to be able to just pick up the KOs that I need in, the, in these moments, right? And that was a very, very crucial KO, because if the Kuroba was able to come in, it could it could have threatened me out, it could have you turned out on that, gotten so much momentum, it could have killed the Brave Bird, and maybe I, I kind of figure out my way around that Crobat, but... It's always going to be a difficult maneuver for me. Regardless, in, in back in comes the Arcanine, and it does intimidate me, but it's not going to matter because Urshifu is bonkers in Giraffe, a dark type that does not have to respect, a hard-hitting physical dark type that does not have to respect intimidates is absolutely bonkers, and a big one of the KO. So now things are looking very, very interesting for me, right? Um, because again. Two of the two of his last mods are very very weak to the Urshifu. He's able to frisk the choice band, um, and I think I realized in this moment that that I, that I don't even think I expected the the Orbiter to come. So Urshifu is not even technically uh, faster than than a really than a really fast Orbiter, but I did not expect it to be a really fast Orbiter, and I don't think it was a really fast Orbiter. It, it was um it was more so meant to be like supportive screens and whatnot, but um. Regardless, we click Wicked Blow, and that's a KO. So the KO. So now, again, I believe all that's left at this moment is the Metagross and the Haxorus. Uh, the Haxorus is very, very scary, but I have all the tools in the world to kind of deal with the Haxorus. And uh, the Metagross is Urshifu Flower. He just went out the, the the Metagross, which is fine. I believe at this point he's kind of um, imagining it's over. And one thing that I, well, I, I, I shouldn't say quite, quite yet, but, um, but yeah, like I said, this is exactly th these are exactly the types of matchups that I expected Urshifu to kind of come into this matchup with because, um, there are no other buttons that I need to click, especially when he leaves the Tropical Blue at home when um when every mon that is potentially faster than than urshifu is taken off the board r right away um these are the moments where urshifu is meant to click a single button over and over again now in comes the hackers right and obviously this is potentially an issue um and i switched out only because i felt like um i had I couldn't potentially let this thing uh, just close combat me. I couldn't let it, you know, set up for free. I couldn't. There, there, there was a lot of danger if I had let this thing set up or do something that I really, you know, just couldn't allow it to do. Right? I. Most of us have had the experience of being, you know, swept by hackers, and it's not fun. It's not ideal. But um, he just goes straight up for a close combat, right? And I see how much that does. It lowers its defenses, which is huge. And, uh, I see that this thing is life orb. So, obviously, um, obviously, close combat here would have been pretty bad, but, but, uh, it wasn't even about, like, preserving differential or anything like that. Even though, looking back on this, uh, it probably would have been the better play just to, uh, just to stay in and click Wicked Below, but, but it kind of also felt like, uh, like doing any anything else would have given him free turns which uh felt really scary for this type of situation but what i found out after the match is that uh this is a slightly bulkier haxorus and haxorus uh was never faster than urshifu and even with its configuration of of bulk uh wicked blow picked up a ko like picked up an oko every time so i was uh confused but but if i just stayed in clicked with blow i would have outsped and picked up the final ko uh but i was too anxious about that and i didn't uh think that, that would be the case also i don't 100 percent remember but i believe i believe um urshifu had sucker punch that's why i switched out if i remember correctly urshifu had sucker punch i believe specifically for the crowbat because i did some pre-game calcs on how much damage banded sucker punch did 
and those numbers were just massive like a decent amount of chip damage onto, onto the crowbat and banded sucker punch just gets me there so much of the time and especially in a situation where i can be banded against crowbat and or zero aura it felt like damage that i couldn't pass up so i believe i did have sucker punch on the on the uh on the set which is exactly why i switched out the haxorus there uh and at the same time there was a some small part of me that was afraid of a potential uh first impression or and i just didn't want to give haxorus more damage than i really needed to in those moments but regardless um that's how the match ends with this the skarmory taking it home with some body presses i wish i could have gotten uh Urshavu another ko with that wicked blow but uh, that's just gonna be how uh it's gonna end up regardless thank you guys so much for watching we are clinched the playoffs and that will be coming up really really soon we have a really really fun set of teams that we could potentially go up against for those uh kind of playoff matchups and i am so excited to kind of build with this team in a playoff setting because i really do think that with the team changes in particular a couple weeks into the season that this team is really built for a deep playoff run and i'm and i have some fun ideas for the people that i know are going to be in the kind of playoff hunt but once again with that thank you guys so much for watching I'm gonna be once again out